Hi, this is Andrew, and I'm going to be doing a Let's Play of Star Traders 4X, Empires in Exile. So we're going to start a new game here. We're going to play on the tutorial map. Normal difficulty, leave the default name, and I'm going to play the syndicates, which are available in the free version of Star Traders 4X. So let's get started. I'm just going to skip the intro as I've seen this before. What I'm going to do in the first chapter of this Let's Play is just show off how to get established. Uh, you can read the advice, it's extremely helpful, but I'm going to talk about it mostly, so I'm not going to worry about it. Um, I'm just going to skip through the Templar Advisor screens. So I start with three colony ships, two Templar Defenders, and an Explorer. You can see on the tutorial map, I've got three nice yellow giants close by. So double tap to move, one's to uh, target and one's to confirm. I'm going to move all my ships into some locations that look good and move my colonizers close to these worlds. Uh, to colonize, I tap the colonize talent and pick a valid target. Now this is going to end my turn. Colonize is a huge event for the Empire always ends the turn. You can see the ranges on the minerals and quality and quality here and I'm going to colonize. That starts my first world. So the settlers have now set down on planets that surround or orbit that solar system, that sun. And we now have Richard Prime has started a colony. Every turn I'm given this list of turn events and I can click easily, tap, sorry I'm playing on computer, uh, tap on the turn event and jump into the colony detail screens, jump to the subject of that event. You can see I have a new uh, Richard Prime colony set up here, I've got active factories of two, population of two, primarily in the first dozen turns of the game my interest is providing additional housing. The exodus is just ending and the star traders are piling off the ships and if you can provide them housing they will pile onto your worlds. So I'm going to start a new hab unit and I'm going to choose subsidy which increases the cost to double so I'll pay 200 for this hab unit but completes it 30% right out of the gate. So I'll get 3 CP. If you go in and look at the colony project, you can see it's already 30% done, 3 CP completed. However, it cost me 200 credits. But for an early game, that's a very worthwhile investment. Now, ships that are in green space uh, don't cost me money. Uh, they're going to refuel and repair, so that's perfect. I'm just going to park my, my fleet outside of the, my new colonies. And I'm going to colonize a second world here. And we'll colonize this second world. That will be Kadar Prime. And again, we get a turn event. So on Kadar Prime, I'm going to do the same tactic. I'm going to pick a HAB unit, subsidize that HAB unit. Kadar Prime has uh, a faction bonus of plus two CP on all of their worlds. So you see that on this world, actually four construction points already, which means that HAB unit is going to build very quickly in about two turns. Okay. Now for my next turn, I'm just going to finish the cycle here and get my third colony colonized. So Devaltos Prime will go down. And on Devaltos Prime, I'm going to do the same thing burning through my early treasury here, but I want to get these early HAB units installed uh, and we're off to the races. So from there, now that I have three colonies set up, I'm going to start using my explorer. I can already see two nearby anomalies. Uh, and I waited a little bit with my explorer because you really want to have some projects going. Um, you can see I'm currently researching planetary construction, which is how the game starts and I now have three colony projects going. Uh, if you use an anomaly when you've got nothing going on then you may not get a bonus. It may not turn out as useful as you hope. So I will explore this anomaly and give that ship a order for next turn to head toward the near, nearby anomaly there. Uh, end my turn and we'll see what I come up with. Perfect. Helped build an existing colony project. 
Let's hope it's not Kadar Prime. I'm hoping for anybody but Kadar, as they are going to be way ahead of everybody else. Perfect. Works for Devaltos, and it's going to finish the Devaltos Hab unit. It's right on schedule, kept up with Kadar. So now I have four housing. I'm still in the first dozen turns, so I'm looking at that's that population is probably going to fill up immediately, um, and I'm going to put in an order for another hab unit for Kadar. So my treasury is starting to run low. I'm not going to subsidize for Kadar because of the plus four uh, population or construction bonus. However, for Devaltos, I am going to choose to subsidize this first hab unit and hurry up the process. Now those are the turn events for the turn. And my explorer has a standing order, so when I end the turn, he just auto-completes that waypoint for me. At this point, I am trucking along. Richard Prime has installed a hab unit. They also don't have the construction bonus that uh, Kadar Prime, Kadar, factions do so I'm going to subsidize their hab unit and at this point you can see I'm making a little bit of money a hundred a turn uh, decent start and I've burnt through a lot of my beginning treasury now the explorer is going to explore this anomaly and then I'm going to give him return orders to come back in a green space where he'll refuel before heading back out into the wild. We'll end that turn and let's hope for uh, perfect. Assisted a colony project. And the turn rolls over. We get a little bit more tutorial advice. And awesome. 10 CP is just enough to get our uh, Devaltos Prime through another HAB unit. And you can see that we are packing up the housing now. People are piling onto the planet. And this is about the turn count where I want to start thinking about uh, building something other than Habs. Um, the initial dozen turns start to tick by and the population growth is going to slow. However, I think I'm going to go for it and we're just going to get ahead of the curve and install an additional Hab there. All my planets are busy and we're going to call it good for the turn. So the Explorer will head back into known space and we're done. Now, I have carved out a small little corner here, uh, and we are excited to see that Kadar Prime has completed another hab, and as I said, this is the point where I, start, I want to start thinking about other upgrades that will help my empire. Now, there's two ways that I can go. Uh, perfect timing, because Planetary Construction 1 has just completed, and if I take a look at my known tech here, you can see Planetary Construction grants me the factory upgrade. So that starts to expand the options of what I can build on Kadar Prime. Right now I have uh, two active factories because there's two points of factory on this planet. And I could use up to three points of factory because my population is three. So now that I've researched factories, they show up in my build list and they're one of the options that I can take. Alternately, I can work on building a mine which will generate income uh, without a re without required population. Uh, at this point, because I'm on a core world and I have uh, more population than I currently have active factories, I'm going to put in a factory. And that's pretty expensive, but I think I'm going to subsidize it. I like to play, a lot of this is personal style. I'm not giving you um, the answer. Everybody plays differently. Um, but this is how I like to play. I like to play very close to the wire, especially in the early days. And I, by that I mean very close to having no money. <coughs> uh, there will be a mid-game where that starts to change. Um, but right now I like to stay very, very close to that line. Now, uh, I just finished Planetary Constructions this turn, so I come back and look at the tech tree and try to make a decision as to what to do next. Expansion is extremely important in Star Trader's Forex Empires, so the my next tech of choice is always to do Starship Construction 1 because it allows me to get the transport and the colonize world talent and I'm able to then build uh, new colony ships that will allow me to expand my empire. So I'm going to take uh, 
Starship Construction 1, and end my turn. The Explorer is headed off into the dark, looking for the alien, specifically looking to find anomalies would be the best thing that the Explorer could dig up. I'm just going to use the Auto Move button to move that Explorer along. Um, as we find worlds out here, uh, I'm going to tap on them, which will add them to my star charts. So it's actually going to make them persistently show up in uh, on the map, even if I leave this area, that planet will stay. I'm starting to think about maybe using my Templar Defenders or Explorers. I want to see a larger swath of space. space. And I'm making better money than before. Let's check on my colonies. You can see that Kadar Prime has upped its population, which is perfect. I now have a maximum of four, which means the factory in the queue is going to be just right for me. Uh, I am in the same situation in Devaltos Prime. I could use more factories. And Rashart Prime is a little behind in population growth, but is wrapping up its last HAB unit here and should hopefully top off on population and I'll have a nice 15 population in my core worlds as the game gets rolling. Okay, so as noted, Rashart Prime finishes that last HAB unit and has enough money to start a factory. <clears throat> and as there isn't much else going on right now, I'm just going to subsidize that factory to get things going. It's already 32% done, and it'll take another 10 turns or so. Uh, six or seven turns, maybe. We'll see. Okay, now we're looking for my explorer to cause some exciting news. In the Empire, found a anomaly. Going to... Uh, explore that and then I want to get as I move around out here I really do want to get all these stars added to my chart so that I'm aware of where they are as I start to make plans to colonize and advance out into the stars so having them on the chart is really valuable so I want to make sure that I visit them each and do a little scan on the system let's make sure there aren't any turn events uh, I install the factory okay so I'm pretty much broke. You can see I have 12 treasury. I'm making good money though. I have good population on uh, my three core worlds. And we got a, one of the better, one of the best, my favorite explorer results of additional CP. So that goes to Kadar Prime. Kadar Prime finishes its factory, which is excellent. Devaltos Prime has its HAB unit in. It's now four of six and is really in need of a factory. However, we're a little short on money did that to myself so we're gonna have to wait a turn and Kadar Prime has finished its factory as well so I'm gonna wait a turn there now really important things about the economy in Star Traders Forex is the difference between idle construction points and active construction points these two planets are solar systems now Devaltos Prime and <coughs> Kadar Prime both have idle construction points so between the two of them, they have eight idle construction points. Normally, those are being dedicated to a project that you're working on. If you're not using them, those construction points turn directly into money. So taking a turn off here it should net me a pretty good result for the next turn in terms of money, uh, money made. So I'm going to uh, survey that world and head the explorer off into the deep dark space. Now fuel is running low. Well, we're doing well, but we're not going to be able to stay out here too much longer without coming home. Uh, but that's the life of the explorer. So roll the turnover, and nothing particular happened here. Now you can see that I did get a significant jump in my income for the turn, up to 180. Uh, and that's based on those uh, idle CP. So I'm going to spend the money specifically on Devaltos and I'm going to put in a factory. I'm focusing on factories right now because I have population, excess population that isn't in a factory. It's definitely uh, going to help my empire expand um, and grow. If I was in a position where I was topped out on population of factory, then I'd be looking to put in more mines because I can just make 
income uh, flat off my minerals and I rolled three really good mineral worlds here and I don't need the additional population. So I'll be getting to that point pretty soon in my expansion. Looking good on housing and I'm going to leave Kadar Prime uh, idle again and make some additional credits for the turn. Again, my playstyle is sort of to play close to the wire um, and I'm in good shape now with 285. I'm going to move to this planet, survey the planet. Perfect, found another anomaly, head that direction. And let's take a look at Kadar Prime. Is now kind of a uh, matched population to factories. So we're going to give this, I now would like to start installing mines. I have a really nice uh, mineral world here. So I just don't have the money to get that started. I'm going to wait another turn. And head my explorer to this anomaly. Get the mine started on Kadar Prime. And again, mines are really critical to the economy. Uh, they cause, they just increase income flat uh, without the need for population. And you can really make a lot of money by having a good, strong mining backbone. Um, and they can be very positively affected by treaties and uh, politics. Okay, perfect. So now I've got Anomaly specced out and I'm headed into the dark there to find out what's over there. Ah, the worst possible news is that Xenos are here. We're not alone in the quadrant is what we have learned today. That's very unfortunate. It'll do a little damage to someone's morale, uh, but if we have good housing uh, and we focus on bringing that back up, it will uh, recover over time. So let's see exactly how much damage has been done. Uh, we lost a lot of morale. You can see that my maintenance rate is up. The profit on the planet is down. Uh, the factory we're working on will help recover uh, the, the downed income. Um, but the most important thing here is that I have currently four out of five housing enough housing for people and people are all being put to work or will be all working shortly and the morale will naturally recover um, as I reach new techs I will want to investigate the spice festival which would allow me to hurry along that recovery now we've kind of crossed an important threshold here um, you can see in my turn events that I have just finished the construction of starship Construction 1, the research of Starship Construction 1. And that's critical because, again, it grants me the ability to build a transport ship. So if I go to my list of colonies and I look to see who's idle, nobody's idle. Uh, if I went to Kadar Prime, I could drop in a new ship and I would be able to pick colony ship and add that to the queue. Now this is really the, for me, the point where you go from starting an empire to expanding an empire. So I'm going to cut this, let's play, and start another section called expanding an empire. So I look forward to you joining me in the second section. Thanks. Have fun out there.